The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the verdict, that the light came into the world, but people preferred darkness to light because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come toward the light so that his works might not be exposed. But whoever lives the truth comes to the light so that his works may be clearly seen as done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. I'm sure as you drove into the parking lot this morning, you saw the construction going on behind the church here on the rectory itself construction workers fixing the roofs so we finally were able to get a company out here and start repairing all of our buildings here if you ever know especially in the rectory St. Mary's whenever it rained it was be- actually quite beautiful I had a fountain feature in my in my re- living room every time it rained literally buckets I'd run out of buckets in the rectory to catch all of the rain and so this this I always joke with parishioners that the rectory has more leaks than a pirate ship huh? And so now we finally got a crew out there to fix the roof, hopefully. I don't have to to get an umbrella in my house anymore. And they'll be moving to here. You know, there's a a leak here and in the back of the church itself. And they're moving to the hall. In our faith formation office, we we have a a hole there. Same thing, whenever it rains, we have a beautiful fountain that comes down. So your donation dollars are hard at work when you go outside. But doesn't that happen to our bodies as well? Even if we spend a million dollars to fix this place up, we all know within a couple years, a couple decades, we got to hire another crew to start fixing this place. Because the reality is, and we all know it and we feel it, we break down. Again, no matter how hard we try, no matter how much we exercise, we try to eat well, which is all important. It eventually hits, we break down. We all sense why the beauty and the power and the freeing message of the resurrection of Jesus Christ changes everything. The beauty of the resurrection is that because Christ has been risen now from the dead, you and I will be made new. We all chase this, even non-believers chase this. You know, whenever you watch the news, especially billionaires, they're all trying to figure out ways, how do I preserve my consciousness? If I somehow could just preserve my consciousness out of my my old, decrepit body, and I move it to something else, or they cryogenically freeze the body so that way in the future, hopefully science will come in order to preserve my body again. What is this desire? It's because we know we are We're fickle. And even if we have a billion dollars, it it doesn't free us from the trap of death and sin. And why the resurrection of Jesus Christ was transformed, if you look in the first reading, was utterly stunning. Look at the apostles today. If you haven't already, read the Acts of the Apostles. The Acts of the Apostles is the beginnings of our church. If you remember from last Sunday's readings, the apostles were hiding, cowering in fear in that room behind locked doors. Because they were afraid of death. And then Jesus Christ suddenly appears, resurrected. And then look what would happen to the apostles, cowering in fear. And then now in their readings today. Absolutely unafraid. No matter what the Sanhedrin tried to do, no matter what the Roman Empire tried to do, no matter what anybody tried to do, they they would threaten the early church with death, killing their family members, confiscating their property. You know what the early church did? They said, I don't care. Whatever 
whatever you do to my body, you chop off my head, my fingertips, my body, do whatever you do. Jesus lives, therefore I live. And oh, send this message and tell everybody. Why the resurrection of Jesus Christ changes absolutely everything. And when we tell the world the beauty and what we're made for and what awaits us, it frees everybody from this decrepit death that always hangs over us. And I beg of you, do not keep the message of Jesus Christ to ourselves. We cannot just hoard it. Because I'm telling you, even non-believers, they worry about death, which is why insurance, by the way, is one of the, one of the biggest industries in the world. Why? Because <laughs> we know we're trying to stave off this, and we know that bad things will always happen. Jesus Christ is the answer. We must live it out well, no matter what anybody says. Share the message. Let it explode out of here. And then we will live like how like the apostles did in that first reading. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but have eternal life. Proclaim this with your life.